Look at all these sexy people. <laughs> Welcome everybody. Welcome to the thing. Uh, today we're going to be talking about our 2018 games of the year, so to speak, because um, better late than never. So yeah, we thought we'd do a bit of a roundup of the year. Um, but this is covering games, really any games we played throughout the year. It doesn't have to be things that were just from 2018, because um, that would be silly if we'd been playing other stuff all year and we wanted to talk about that anyway. So we've got a few interesting categories. I think everybody uh, has got ideas for. So, Jamie, well, speaking like of to... everybody, let's do a roundup of the game chaps. Uh, when I point to you, say your name. Uh, we can't see who you're pointing at. Really. <laughs> I can't see who you're pointing at, you idiot. Uh, Amy. Let's go ahead and move in. Oh. And this is Nick and Ash over there, live from, Special guests. from Germany. And that's Denzel. And Denzel. And, Denzel. and Bindi's here with... Uh, and I'm Gordon. Yeah, Gordon's going to be <laughs> interpreting for Bindi today. <laughs> Classic Gordon. So the first category I have down uh, was best character creator slash customization. Well, I, I I'll just jump in real quick, and because mine is is not even a game I I played, but the the evening we spent watching um, Robin um, create a character in Soul Calibur Six, and I probably contributed as well. Well, we contributed. We worked hard on his. Oh, yeah, you, you we chipped in a lot of ideas. His yeah. handkerchief coding. Um, a, a character creator that allows you to apply any asset from any other character in the game to the one you're editing is is good stuff. So you can, as we did, make the biggest, burliest, widest, muscliest guy we possibly could and then made him prance like a ballerina. He was fabulous. He was, he was a strong, independent bear. He was. He was. <laughs> that was going to be my nomination for this, um, simply because I've spent so much more time in the character creator than I have actually playing the game. Um, <laughs> kind of Good though it is, like perfectly decent um, fighting game. Uh, but um, yeah, the 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 breadth of the customization in that game is really really good and um pretty decently intuitive to use which i think counts for a lot in a good character creator um the only drawback i would say for that one is that that you you don't have any particular facial manipulation tools you just have preset faces to choose from mm. uh, but you can change colors and everything and that goes a long way uh, I just wish there were a few more uh, like face options because it's pretty much you know just like the faces of the characters from the game. But that aside, <clears throat> the the like amount of customization you have on like clothing and things you can stick on your characters and color changing and applying like different patterns and stuff mm. uh, to textures is really really good. Mm. Um, so I I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. And, and how about you, Gordon? What have you been customizing? We might need okay. to leave Gordon for last. <laughs> well, right, we're going. We're going to hear from from Gordon in a moment. Uh, now we we'll go live to Matt. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine was uh, well to to save my entire list from being everything from Red Dead Redemption Two because that's all I've been playing the last <laughs> like two months. Uh, mine was actually Monster Hunter World. Um, oh, I really enjoy the the, the oh. customization and stuff in that. Not only from you, but also your little minion pet thing. I can't remember what they're called. Um, oh yeah, the cat guys. Yeah, the little cat guy. Um, I really like the customization of all of that. I think it's really good. Um, and it's again, it's it's quite in depth. Um, but on the other side of that, I do really enjoy the customization throughout Red Dead Redemption too. Oh, uh, there you go. He, he got yeah, <laughs> clothes like 
everything is there's just so much right the way down to your horse you yeah. can customize the I saddle the customization of the horse yeah. stuff that we were looking at yeah. here that was fun the even the 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 bed roll which you never actually like see other than on the horse is customizable to three different styles and then like 20 different colors yeah. so the depth of that is just insane for a game that kind of lives and dies on your ability to sort of want to invest in your character and really play it like mm-hmm. almost like really role playing it yeah yeah it's Absolutely. To, the, to the extent it's where uh, like bad. if you want to start getting creative with your facial hair in red dead redemption you have to wait for it to grow but <laughs> yeah you do you have to wait for it to grow and then like i got to a point um it doesn't grow any further unless yeah. you take tonics right and there's uh well, like, I, got to a point where I wanted to do something specific but because i had given myself a massive handlebar mutton chops mustache thing <laughs> i couldn't do exactly what i wanted because i had to wait for the like chin part to grow oh, back oh no <laughs> Like exactly you, like you know that. a game's good when instead of robbing trains and uh, you know shooting people in gunfights, you're spending more time deciding on your haircut at a barber's. Absolutely, <laughs> that's, hey, that's, that's good for robbing a train. You can't look scruffy while you're holding up a stagecoach. All right. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> look your best. Well, from what you've both, both, well, from what you've all said, you know, character customization, you got to look good, and you're you're creating classy people. So, uh, buff pays it. How about you, Gordon? Fallout 4. It gives you a hell of a lot of options, and you can spend hours on that alone. I personally enjoy how much you can do, but I know some people find it too much. Although, it can look very different in-game to how it looks in that initial section. So it's good that you have the option to mess around with it further into the game, via the creepy plastic surgeon guy in Diamond City. Yeah. Mm. It's um, it's kind of the opposite of what you were just saying with Soul Calibur, Robin. Where yeah, um, I feel like in things like Fallout Four and you know almost like Mass Effect as well, where you can change the width of like eyebrows and stuff, and like the, how high the cheekbones are and stuff, Big and chin, all these pointy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Super detailed, super specific geometry of the face that. Mm. almost a bit too specific for a game like Fallout, which people might well play entirely in first-person mode, and you'll never see it. And like, It looks fine in profile, then you turn it around and you're like, oh dear lord, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh god, what was her name from um, our, our Mass Effect 2 play through? What was her name? Fish Lips. Oh, yeah, oh. I can't remember her name. Oh. She looks so weird in profile. I was going to say Geraldine, but it's not. It's something like that. But, oh, yeah, but when you saw a certain profile, that still cracks me up. <laughs> I might go and watch it after this. Josephine. 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 That was it. <laughs> uh, mine's not as, as in-depth in or detailed or um, as aesthetically... Uh, pleasing, but I think it's just little fun and silly, and it's all the different character costumes you get in Mario uh, Odyssey. Yeah. Um, you know, because you travel around all these different planets and worlds, and you're on beaches and ice levels and cities and stuff. Uh, and actually, uh, on the one hand, try I tried to play thematically. So every time I went to a new city, I had to dress accordingly. So I had to get my cowboy gear on for the desert, or I had to get my snowsuit, and that felt very fitting. Yeah, I did that uh, too. And then other times I was a, a pirate clown and just running around being a madman and it really amused me. Yeah. And it was when Robin sent a um it's on our Instagram, it was a, a Halloween post of like Mario in a clown costume looking really creepy, and I was like, I fucking love that shot. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, and oddly, not so although you've seen Mario in many costumes, it's not something that's been done in his platformers before, but I think it actually quite <laughs> Uh, in a charming way, quite added to it. It's very basic, but uh, yeah, like I'd be interested to see them potentially hats. take. I like putting like hats on people. <laughs> I'm a simple man with simple tastes. Um, <laughs> Those tastes are hats. And speaking of hats, uh, I think this this kind of ties in as a as a segue of being able to customize thing. 
is uh, the game of 2018 you played that you feel had the best ability slash mechanic. Um, I'll, I'll throw mine out problem. there as an example. Um, uh, this might, uh, I don't know if this game will come up again much for me, but um, I enjoyed God of War a lot. And the axe throwing in that game feels really, really nice. Mm. And it, mm. it's one of those things that pulls the whole game together a bit. Like, without that, I think it would be, it would still be, ha have a really, like, interestingly, sh beautifully shot and, like, told story. And it'd be really interesting. And it would still have, you know, decent Dark Souls-like combat but a bit kind of heavier and stuff. But just having that one mechanic gives you like this one thing you can keep coming back to. And mm -hmm. it's just, it's got a really like heavy <laughs> feel to it. I don't know how to describe it other than just, you know, it's um, makes you feel strong and cool. Nice. Yeah, I get what you mean. I've only just started it. I'm not very far into it, but yeah, but it's, it's a good one. I like it's that. Just, Good, good animation and sound design, apart from anything else. And it does this thing where when you... Because basically you have the ability to throw your axe, tap the button, and it comes back to your hand. And when it does that, it has a very specific slight, like, rumble in the controller and just feels really good, like, physically. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. My, my um, choice for this is, is similar. Um, and it's, in general... In general, it's just the combat in um, Marvel's Spider-Man on PS4. Mm. But I, I could be more specific by saying the web zip um, ability, which is um, you're on the ground, you're about to fight someone, and you press triangle, and he literally chooses one target, slings a web out, and pulls himself in a flying punch towards that target. It doesn't sound like much, but... And let me try and explain reasonably quickly. The whole combat is like, when you first start up, you think, oh, this is Arkham stuff. This is like any of the Arkham games. Fine. That's a good system. Emulate it. That's, that's fine. But it's actually, and I think mostly down to like something as simple as that web zip. It's mm. so much better. And I'm quite a ways in now. And I think they have launched that system into a, just a different, realm but when you do the web zip in spider-man and he goes to someone and it's like it like you're traversing the space in the same similar way that batman would but it makes so much more sense and it for a start it makes more sense that spider-man would be able to do this because that's his whole fucking thing is super agility um yeah and it also just grounds it so much more when you actually physically see something pulling you over there the things like the webs and the the uses of your web your webs in combat, which I hadn't hadn't really cared that much about before I came to the game. So I was like, it'll be what it is. It'll be Arkham. Fine. I'm more interested in the in the swinging around. The combat is actually entertaining me more right now because the the way it opens it up from from its Arkham kind of beginnings. It's so diverse, and I was discovering new things just playing it today. I had um, tied up a guy with webs, and he had flattened against an open car door, because when you do it enough, they just like get hit back, and they flatten against the car door. The thing is, you can also rip car doors off and swing them <laughs> round in a circle, yeah. hitting other enemies. He was still attached to the car door, so I swung this him around thug. for a little while, and then, so, and then it was... I was so pleased with this accidental combination of things happening. It's just this yeah. this, this add-on to the Arkham style um, of combat, which as I didn't know it could be improved so much. I was mm. really good. Well, just remember, with great power comes great responsibility, Nick. Mine was Spider-Man and God of War, but two different things. So my mechanic Oops. was... The switch, just general kind of swinging around the city in Spider-Man. I actually love it and spent it's, like a good couple of hours doing it once I got the hang of it fully. So much fun. And the other mechanic, it's, 
<laughs> it was great. Um, and then the other one from God of War is a uh, mechanic of Atreus and how well he yeah. fits in with the combat. Because I was really, when I first heard about it, I was a bit like, oh, AI kind of partners in combat always seem to get in the way or they're just frustrated. They either do one or the other. They don't do anything or they do too much. And I thought this is going to be a, a, something that they're going to have to really balance out. And I actually, I think that Atreus really works well in, and like I say, I'm not very far into it, so I've not fully unlocked the potential of the combat yet. But even what I have seen, just him being kind of stood at the side, firing a, an arrow occasionally. And if you're being targeted, if you use him to fire an arrow, the enemies then switch their attention to him so that you can then kind of get back in the game, back in the fight, as it were. Nice. Because um, it's useful to have projectile things, and that's why I like having the axe as an option. Yeah. But that's very yeah. much less, like a slower, heavier, harder hitting thing. Whereas um, having, because for anybody that doesn't know, um, Atreus works where it's literally like you tap a button and that is your Atreus button and he will shoot people with his bow. And it's more for kind of just disrupting the flow of enemy attacks. Um, right. And it's it's really useful like that and it works really well. Tell me, Gordon. Do you have a combat-related mechanic, or is this something fresh and tasty? <laughs> Definitely using the ODM gear in the Attack on Titan games. I say both, because they are extremely similar. The second game is slightly more complicated, so it's harder to use but gives you more control. However, once you get good at it, it's super satisfying to whiz around, chopping off body parts at an alarming rate. Really fun. <laughs> Nice. I will. I will second that. Talking about swinging mechanics, uh, until Spider Man Four came out, I think my favourite ones were in the Attack on Titan game that me, that me and Bindi were playing. Like when you are swinging around, and yeah, okay, sometimes it's a little bit, a little bit dodgy, and it's not as polished, you know, by comparison to the latest Spider Man. Um, but being, it's interesting. You said actually they've uh, they've changed it up for the second game and actually made it a bit more complicated. Because uh, when you get the hang of it, you do feel like a god, and you're just flying around and killing titans left, right, and centre. And we're like, "Woo! This is awesome! I'm not scared of anything." The game is much more realistic in terms of using gas and blades. Yeah, we we <laughs> never had we never had to worry about that. The hardest thing was just kind of locking on and getting the speed right. We didn't think about supplies at all. Considering how um how much has been made of Spider Man's swinging this year be really interesting to see if they <laughs> yeah mary jane's not happy at all <laughs> <laughs> zing 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 i'm here be all night interesting to see if they like were to have a character who was more kind of mellow focused in the air because mm. it seems like that's something very particular to attack on titan that looks really really cool and fun to do and it's what i always think is really impressive about um uh, professional uh, pro um, Smash Bros players yeah. when they do all the like the aerial combat and all the off ledge kind of like fighting and stuff. The skill of that it just looks so much more impressive than if you're doing something on land. So to have air combat feel very nice and fluid is a is a very particular good skill slash mechanic. Hey, brought it back. Can I um can I put a uh, just a special mention? on the end of this uh, ability and mechanic discussion, just yes. in general for all video games, of uh, photo modes. Mm. I'm really into photo modes. <laughs> yeah. This year has been a big for me in uh, taking photos in video games. <laughs> and As you can see from Nick Morrison's Twitter page. Yeah, exactly. Twitter slash Instagram slash Facebook. I, I really enjoy I, games are kind of just reaching the point like pretty recently where they are really definitely pretty enough but yeah that's all i wanted to say I, nice. I realize that. no that's a good point i i really like the fact that that's becoming almost a standard in I, like yeah. big <laughs> big high-end games mm. no I, I want it to to be that way i think it should 
Well, if I may, um, may. I'll, I'll cleverly cleverly tie the two topics together uh, by saying uh, the ability mechanic I thought was the, uh, the uh, most impressive, and that ties into also my best view slash thing you saw, which is also cut tying into some photo stuff. Um, so my my favourite mechanic. Um, uh, which I have not played around enough with yet, is the camera-controlled perspective uh, using PSVR in AstroBot. Oh, nice. Uh, so I got a PSVR at the end of the year, and it has massively made an impact on how I view video games. And the, the standout moment as a mechanic is playing a third-party uh, platformer a la Mario or Crash Bandicoot and being this um, uh, like omnipotent figure that kind of floats around with your character so you're still controlling your character but you are in complete control of where the camera is looking and at first it's like a huge novelty because you're kind of like oh shit where is my guy and you've got to find him and you've got to watch him as you kind of go along so you'll be playing and like looking up at the ceiling as he's doing stuff above you and having to like judge distances so the perspective of it um really kind of throws it out there and then they start to introduce little like clever mechanics like there's certain walls which uh as the camera you have to like break for your guy to get through or um you'll hit a, you'll hit a dead end and you've got to like your guy can't go any further but you can like look round and see like the gaps and then Kind of, you know, kind of guide them ah, interesting. through muscle memory, or an enemy will spit goo in your face, and suddenly you can't see anything, so you can't see your guy, and you can hear him like getting attacked, and you're having to like freak out, and you're just as involved in the game. Um, and there's this weird disconnect between controlling something and viewing something, uh, but I think it's fast fascinating. Um, I can understand how, as it started off as a tech demo. If they gave the game a lot of thought, which they have, and I believe it's reviewing very well, yeah. uh, it's a, a potential future for VR and platforming. Like, I just keep thinking I want to do Mario like this. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm I'm really glad that um, that game seems to be nailing that thing really nicely. Because yeah, it's it was it was so the way I describe it is refreshing. Uh, because it's just something I've never done before, and being like, "This is really clever," but obviously yeah. fun as well. But yeah, um, awesome. Which then ties us into next category of best view slash thing you saw. Uh, which, following on from what I just said, mine is just PSVR in general. Mm. Um, I know it's not the greatest of quality if you're comparing it to the. The Vive or the Oculus, uh, but I don't have either of those things or a crazy PC rig, and so we'll never have one. And as something you can just plug into your PS4 and where the catalog of games is currently at, um, I think it, ev every time I play something, it's it's just visually impressive because they're all having to do something unique. I mean, I'm definitely yeah. playing good games, but. But like the first thing I did was just like a deep sea coral reef kind of like dive, and I was like, "This is really cool." And I, oh, no gameplay, just looking around in a shark tank. It's just like ah, the view of it, just everything seems to be decent. Mm, nice. Uh, cool. And that is mine. Nick, do you want to take this? Sure. Um, um, the the way Red Dead. Two uses light. So interesting to look at it, in terms of its um, the quality of the light. It's hard to it's hard to describe, but it's there's, there's a couple of different kinds in the game as well. There's obviously electric lights in some of the towns and and things, and there's also like fire lamps and things, and then there's also just you might find actual fires out in the wilderness, and then there's also like moonlight. And there's there's a couple of times I've just been out at night and just looked at a village in the distance and the difference between the moonlight and the actual electric lights from the town has just been so interesting and dynamic and i just, i remember there's i feel like there's always been 
periods in like gaming history when game games their manipulation of light or or their imp implementation of light uh, when Silent Hill Two came out and the fact that the little torch that he had on him would cast incredible moving shadows and that was like whoa uh, things like Far Cry Two when you stood under a tree and the light beamed through um, did yeah. the god rays the first time we saw god rays in a video game and you were like whoa holy shit that's totally amazing and i feel like this has been a similar kind of moment of of looking at this kind of light it just looks different and better than anything i've seen before the biggest town in red dead at night is called saint denis um and it it's like a kind of like a, a riff on New Orleans um, and it just at night often there's like a lot of fog rolls in and it just it looks incredible with these these electric lights barely illuminating very much but just illuminating around themselves it's and just very creating these, realistic. it's really 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 interesting mm. do you have a similar view best view Matthew yeah mine's actually the lighting in Red Dead as well uh, it's exactly the same um, and it's it's for the same reason and again like you say Nick with like advancements throughout games um, I remember when Splinter Cell did they one of the Splinter Cell games pioneered a lighting technique where Sam Fisher crawls behind a um, lattice paneling like in a garden and the light shines through directly onto him and they were like this is the first time it's ever been done and I remember being like oh my god that's so cool and then like you say you're going through the woods at night in this game near like the, an area called Butcher Creek and it's misty mm -hmm. and the moonlight is shining through the trees, through the mist. And it's, it's creepy, but it's beautiful. The very different areas of the map uh. do have very specific mm -hmm. lighting and atmospheres and everything else. And it's incredible that they've managed to do that in such a great effect. Yeah. There's a lot of love gone into that game. Yeah. yeah. Took them eight years, so yeah, I'd yeah. expect so. Right? And they Red delayed, Dead and they did three. It three times. Red Dead Three. Yeah. Make it happen. I'm waiting for Bully Two. I want Bully Two. Oh, oh I'd go for Bully Two. Well, speaking of bullies, Gordon, I know you got something to say. <laughs> Watching the Institute burn to the ground in Fallout Four. A. It looked freaking cool. B. I put a lot of time and love into that playthrough and it felt like the finale for that character. It felt like a movie moment. Nice. Nice. That's good. So that was that was your decision then to uh rid the institute. Rid oh sorry, rid the world of the institute in Fallout 4. Institute sucks. Yeah, I don't think Fallout 4 gets enough credit for its visuals because of the you know, the drab uh, post-apocalyptic kind of palette oh, and the rampant um, yeah and actually like i remember like water looks really good in that game and obviously they do a lot of texturing for like rust and metal and yeah. uh, there's there's certain like um crazy lightning and radio um radiation storms and they're all visually yeah. uh, uh, you know really really distinct and the cool armor. Gordon's got something else. In general, in the long dark, I appreciate that they haven't gone for realism. Mm. I, yeah, I love the art style uh, in the long dark. It really adds to the feeling of being in the wilderness in the snow without having to be realistic about it. Mm. I haven't seen a style like it. Yeah, it does feel like something you don't see in games very often at all. Like it's almost sort of watercolory. Especially in mm. something that's as ambitious as The Long Dark is. Mm. So it's not a, a small game that you go through in a few hours. It's a huge, constantly going thing. Mm. And do you have similar views, Robin, on your best view? Um, I find it really difficult to think of something for this one. Um, 
Hollow Knight, which mm. I got a lot of time out of this year. That game's really good. Yeah. How did you play Hollow Knight? Um, like, first half of the year, I think. I played that um, over the summer. How have we not had this conversation? <laughs> don't know. But what I liked it a lot. Been telling me. That game's really good. Um, we'll save that, that. I wanted to have that, that actually <laughs> as a, 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 a runner-up for uh, best mechanic. Because mm. um, all of your abilities in that game feel really good to use. Um but uh, yeah, the the art's really nice and uh, has, strikes a really nice tone. Um, and along a similar lines, I've been playing um, the Final Station recently, uh, and that is like very different art style. Like it's very um, sort of minimalist pixel art, but it's it goes for a very like um, atmospheric, washed out kind of feel. Um, that I really like. Uh, it's it's nice. Pulls pulls it off really nicely. And uh, there are some specific cool things in God of War, uh, which are awesome and really nice to look at. Yeah, a lot of a lot of thought and a lot of time and money has gone into that game, and it shows. Well, speaking of of time going into things uh our next category is <laughs> oh shit for the most time sucking game so matt speaking of sucking uh do wanna, do i don't know what why am i in charge I of segways they're all going to be dreadful <laughs> that's what you're famous for you knew you're this was going to happen that one. doing great <laughs> um so yeah I, I feel like maybe me and robin have got similar ones here um mm-hmm. <laughs> I might be wrong, but mine is going to be Jurassic World Evolution. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I sat down to play this one night, and it was about ten, eleven o'clock, and Hannah was just going to bed, and I was like, "Yeah, no worries. I'll I'll be in bed about two, I expect." Nice. Uh, I looked at my watch, and it was quarter past one, and I was like, "Cool, three quarters of an hour. I'll just do this mission." I looked at my watch again, and it was five. I've, I've done that exact thing most nights. Yeah, oh, and I went, oh shit, I need to go to sleep. <laughs> I mean, that, that encapsulates this this category spot on. You went to bed at seven, seven Robin. Gordon. That's impressive. Oh, I, to- I told you you were holding more secrets from me. <laughs> yeah, that that is a yeah. game that really pulls you in and... It does the thing of you know you're you're generating you're generating jobs for yourself all the yeah. time. So you go okay, I'll just do this quick thing, and then you go oh, but now I now I need to do this thing because this is an emergency. And then you go back to the original thing, and then it gives you an idea of a new thing you can do, mm-hmm. and it just goes on and on and on, and um, <laughs> it's very nice. And also, it's a game that I've really enjoyed doing nothing in, like yeah. just driving around or just sitting and watching dinosaurs watching the dinosaurs because the animation is great um the, so they probably the deserve one... a shout out for best view too hey yeah um, the one criticism i do have for it is that the dinosaurs clip yeah they do sometimes and i'm a bit like you don't know that dinosaurs didn't clip yeah so... we don't know <laughs> it... the more this you is, know the less is... you know <laughs> as accurate as that may be i do feel a bit like in this day and age, <laughs> if dinosaurs were alive <laughs> now, they would. <laughs> they, they, they would be clipping. Clipping. Yeah, we would especially no with clipping. all the feathers. <laughs> so yeah, that'd be my only criticism of that game. But that game is definitely a time sucker. Like I had spent hours on that thing, and it felt like half an hour. Yeah, and you and you say the exact same, Robin. There's nothing else. You know, Minecraft wise, or something that's stolen your time as much. Well, I always waste my life on Minecraft every single year, and I've been doing that a lot this year. But this was, this is the one that's really made me lose track of time the most, like consistently every single time I play it. Um, it's uh, it's a good game. Nice. And how about you, Nick? Well, Gordon uh, prepares an answer. <laughs> Mine um, was a, a runner-up as well for another category that we have coming. Um, 
but uh, uh, I booted up Stardew Valley again. Um, nice. Just, just uh, we... all hands up for Stardew Valley. Yeah. Hey. Um. Yeah, just after we moved to Germany, um, I was like, I'll put this up again, and I'll um, I'll start a new farm and see how that goes. And it and it's ex- almost exactly the same thing that you just described, Robin, of um, giving yourselves tasks. And this yeah. time, because I was, I've been through it before, and I know what I'm doing now, I don't have to rediscover anything. So I was like, you start up, and you're okay. You're like, all right, I'm gonna get all of the community things. I'm gonna focus yeah. on getting all that shit done things that i know to look out for and to work towards early but it's still even though i know what i'm doing the game is so well balanced in terms of um what you can do at that early stage it's like you can't you can't leapfrog anything you have just got to take you've still got to take your time i've still got to at the very beginning you've still just got to till the fucking soil and plant some parsnips because you can't do it. Sometimes, I mean, yeah. isn't that a rule for life? It's a game that has a very... It's a game that has a very, very subtle um, and yet very effective time pressure to it. Yeah. Because, you know, exactly. as in real life, there are only so many hours in the day. And, and, and when, it, you, when you wake up and you, yeah, you basically barely get to scratch your lands and plant some shitty crops you go yeah. like oh fuck i'm never getting anything done oh I'll, I'll i'll have to spend another day doing this and then a day turns into two days turns into a week and uh-huh. then yeah you blink and it's five in the morning and okay you, you've grown some crops and done some exploring but you're like but i've still got to do all this other stuff and go <laughs> mining and buy some things from the supermarket and go to the pub and there's there's not enough time. There's not there's not enough time. Woo this lady with and, this rock she wants to eat. Yeah, woo <laughs> Abigail by feeding her an amethyst. That's my favorite um, part. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, and it's just I I don't I don't lose too much time to games anymore. I, I'm a lot better at um, managing my time with it. But Stardew Valley can it like definitely ate up a few entire afternoons when we first got here and we were like getting used to our lives back in Europe. So Gordon, Stardew Valley is your time sink as well. Oh, okay. Stardew Valley for sure. It is incredibly rare for Robin to go to sleep before me, but I definitely sat up playing that game until around 5 a.m. the other night. Because of the day-to-day system, it's so easy to just keep going and going. You do the thing of saying, okay, well, I'll just do this, but that inevitably leads straight into another task. It's dangerous. Yeah, I I would say that's, that would be my addictive. main mm. criticism of that game, is that I wish there was an opportunity to pause and stop it, like, in the middle of the night when you go to bed, because... The way it is, you go, oh shit, it's nearly it's nearly nighttime. I don't want to pass out in the middle of a field. So I have to quickly finish what I'm doing and run home. And then you go to bed and it does the little thing of nighttime is passing. And then you wake up and then first thing you have to do all your morning chores yeah, to get yeah. them done. So um, like you don't get to stop playing the game it, until it does like, say... midday the day after you wanted to stop. That and... is the only thing. It does save. Uh, overnight, uh, yeah. It does. So that, in theory, is once it's saved and you've slept, that should be the time to quit. But you're right; the start of the new day is so exciting because you're like, I get to go and harvest all my crazy crops, and these new things have arrived. That's the worst time to want to quit. It'd be better yeah, to really. uh-huh. make you quit before you went to bed and not have that rush. Yeah. Well, I think that is—is is that everybody's? Oh shit! I think that's it. Like, yeah. Game. Fair play to Jurassic Park and uh, sorry, Jurassic World and um, Stardew Valley for being universally enjoyable yeah. by us. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. For being um, universally a problem. <laughs> <laughs>